Hello Internet! Are the lady here? And in this video I'm gonna show how to dig tunnels or holes in your 3D model. If you want to know how to split this model in parts, for example splitting the head from the base of this model, I have shown how to do that in another video. So don't forget to check out my previous tutorials. For digging the tunnels or holes in the model, we're gonna do a subtraction operation, but this one is a little bit different from the one I have shown before in the previous tutorial. And to start working on our model, let's use a tool called Tinkercad. This is a free and web-based tool, so you don't need to buy or install it. So let's start by creating a cylinder. For creating it, we just have to drag it to the viewport. And as I mentioned in the previous video, it's important to set this object as a whole. If we set this object as a solid, it won't perform the subtraction operation. So don't forget to set it as a whole. Now I'm just resizing the cylinder by clicking and dragging these squares around. This cylinder will make a hole in the eye of our 3D model, so later I can install LED lights on it. So I'm gonna set the diameter of this cylinder equal or a little bigger than the LED light that I'm planning to install later. We can use this arrow here to move the object up or down. Now I'm gonna use the side arrows here to rotate the object. And we can use the left arrow key or the right arrow key in the keyboard to move the cylinder left or right. If you feel like you need more or less precision whenever you move an object, you can change the snap grid value here. So the idea here is to make a tunnel that will pass through the eyes of our 3D model, so I can install LED lights that will illuminate the eyes of our 3D model. Just for visualizing internal parts of our 3D model, I'm gonna temporarily set our 3D model as a whole. This will make the model transparent, but don't forget to set this model as solid again before exporting it. Once we have our object resized and placed in the desired location, and having the object selected, we can clone it by clicking here and duplicate. And now I'm gonna place this new cylinder in the end of the previous cylinder to continue this tunnel. So the complete tunnel will start in the eye of our 3D model, where the wires will enter, and it will end in that hole in the middle of the 3D model, where the wires will exit. Now that we have a complete tunnel for one side of the model, let's replicate this tunnel for the other side. So for making things easier, we're just gonna duplicate and invert the original tunnel. So both sides will be symmetrical. And for doing that, I'm gonna start by selecting both cylinders by holding shift and clicking in each one of them. And having them selected, I'm gonna click here in duplicate. And after that, I just have to click in flip, and then I'll click in this arrow. And after that, you just have to place the new tunnel in the desired location. To move the object sideways, you just have to use the left and right arrow keys in your keyboard. Now let's make another tunnel that will connect the base to the head. So we can make the wires come out from the batteries in the base and go to the head where are the LED lights. So let's make another tunnel by adding a cylinder that will connect the base to the head. And the process is the same that I did before. I just have to drag the cylinder to the viewport and after that I have to place it in the desired location. So now let's say that I want to create a cavity that will hold the batteries that will provide energy to the LED lights. For doing this new cavity, I'll be using boxes instead of cylinders. So now we're gonna create cavities instead of tunnels. But the process is basically the same. The size of the box or the cavity that you are creating will depend on the size of the batteries that you're gonna use. I'll be making smaller cylinders as well, so the smaller cylinders will create threads where we can insert screws that will connect the lid to the base. And the approach that I chose here consists of two boxes. One box will make room for the lid of the base, I'll show later how to create the lid, and the other box will create the actual cavity that will hold the batteries. So that's why you're gonna see me creating two boxes here, one more external box and one internal box. Also, don't forget to set the model as a solid object before performing the subtraction operation. And before executing the subtraction operation, let's create a backup copy of all the cavities and tunnels that we created. For doing this, I'm gonna click and drag here to select everything, and then I'm gonna click in the duplicate button. And then let's place the new copy aside. And now to finally execute the subtraction operation, let's select everything and then let's click in group. 
Depending on the complexity of the 3D mesh that you are working with, it may take a few seconds or even a few minutes so the results can show up on the screen. And here is our 3D model after the subtraction operation, including the new cavity that will hold the batteries and the tunnels that will hold the LED lights. Now we just have to make a lid for the base. And for doing that, we're gonna work on that copy that we made before. And it's pretty simple to create the lid. I'll start by covering everything with these boxes set as holes. I'll cover everything except the area where the lid will be. Now I'll select this box that was setting the lid as a hole and I'm gonna delete it. Now the lid won't be a hole anymore. And finally we just have to select everything again and apply the subtraction operation by clicking here in group. And here is the lid of the base. And the models are ready to be exported and prepared to be 3D printed in your favorite slicer software. For exporting the model, you just have to click on the model first to select it and then click in export. And after that, you just have to click in the file format that you want to export. In my case, I clicked in STL. And when the download of the exported 3D model is complete, you can open it in your favorite slicer software and prepare it for printing. So that's it! If this video was useful for you, don't forget to give a like and to subscribe to this channel to receive new tutorials. I'll see you next time, bye bye!